Four Star Playhouse presents Charles Boyer, Dick Powell, David Niven, Ida Lupino. This is the night of nights in this jeweled and fabled city of the sun. It's the night of the Academy Awards. For Grace Markham, it was a triumph that bordered on fantasy. For 20 years, she had lived for a moment like this, struggled for it, dreamed of it. Ladies and gentlemen. As Grace stood there before the glittering I crowd, even as she accepted the coveted Oscar, she thought of how it all began. The eyes of the world were on Hollywood in 1936. It was the center of glamour, of excitement, of fabulous dreams. It was a gay time of sudden success. Anything was possible, and the world was young. All right, stand-ins, take a rest. All right, honey, famous. Make way for the star. Light's awfully hot, dear. Yes. How do I look? You look beautiful, Miss Clayton. Oh, thank you. A stand-in is a human prop to be tested and measured for light and shade till the star steps in and the camera turns. This is the star, Marion Clayton, one of the ten top box office names. Restless, ambitious, ruthless if anyone dared displease her. Oh! I'm dead. Absolutely dead. Oh, you must be, Miss Clayton. Oh. Can I fix you a cup of coffee? No, I'm Oh, and the worst part about it is I've got to start another one almost the minute this is finished. How wonderful. Oh, of course, I know it's going to mean a lot of hard work for you, but is it going to be a good story? Mm -hmm. The studio bought that novel, you know, The Rage of a Woman. I'll have three leading men, 22 changes of wardrobe, and a chance to do some real acting. I read the book. Did you? Well, no, as a matter of fact, I didn't, but uh, the screenplay will be ready in a few days. I'll read that. You're so lucky, Miss Clayton. Of course, you deserve everything you've got, and you've worked so hard for it. But I guess you're the envy of everyone. Beautiful, movie star, young. Well, we're the same age, aren't we, Grace? I guess so, but... Well, I'm just, you know. Oh, of course, I'm not complaining. Really, I'm not. You are complaining, and I don't blame you. I like things the way they are. I wouldn't change it. I love being a standard, and I wouldn't change that for anything. Really, I wouldn't. I'm changing it. I'm getting you a screen test for a contract. Oh, oh Miss Clayton, I can't believe it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right, that's all right, Grace. You just drive me home and we'll talk. Hmm? Oh, There's no reason to be so upset about it, dear. Oh, you, you, you're just the most wonderful person. Fix us a drink, will you, Grace? Of course. Oh, it's so good to be home. Oh. I do love this house. I think that little man from Pasadena did a wonderful decorating job, don't you? Oh, yes, Miss Clayton. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, Grace, now really, that rug is new. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll clean it up. Oh, forget it, dear, forget it. You must only be happy today. Forget it. I have another surprise for you, Grace. What? I'm going to make the screen test with you. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I can't believe this. Of course, they wanted the studio test director to do it, but I insisted. Oh, Miss Clayton. 
Oh, stop being so formal, dear. It's time you call me Marion. Uh, Marion. Oh, it's going to be such a thrill acting with you. Well, dear, it, uh, it isn't really an acting test. You see, they want to see how you photograph and all that, so, uh, well, it's like an informal interview on film. Oh, I see. Oh, I just don't know how I'll ever repay you. Well, Donnie, you can't fix me that drink. Of course. Hello, Grace, dear. Hello. Would you care to tell us a little about yourself, Grace? Well, I, I was born in a small town in Illinois. I've always been interested in acting. Well, go on, Grace. Well, when I was working back in Chicago, I belonged to a little theater group. Action. Hello, Grace, dear. Hello. Won't you tell us a little about yourself, Grace? Well, I was born in a small town in Illinois. And I've always been interested in acting. Why are we looking at this? Go on. Just doing Marion a favor. She wanted her stand in to have a test, so we made a test. I belong to a little theater group. Well, what parts did you play, Grace? Oh, well, I, I, I played all sorts Back of... Back in the night, please. On the marks. Keep your head up, look right into the lens. I'm sorry. What part, dear? Oh, I, I played all sorts of parts. Comedy, Shakespeare. Hello? Oh, and I played oh. Nora in a doll's house. Oh, I put them on. Don't look at me, dear. Look at the camera. Yes, Sam, you got my message, huh? Now, turn that thing down a bit, will you? You're right. Right. That's right. Well, is he going to do the part? How much is he going to want? Okay, Sam, if you can start by the tent. Now, I suppose we'll have to pay his transportation from New York. All right, all right. Yeah, have him in my office by Friday morning. I'll air mail a script to him. All right. Come on. Let's go down to the office and mail a script to him. Oh, what do the producers know? Now, I agree you need more work. Well, that'll come in time. You'll get more easy, more at home. But forget the contract, honey. They tie you up for seven years and throw you into anything that came along. I wanted that contract more than anything in the world. But what really upset me was letting you down after you went to bat for me. But I'm still going to bat for you. Marion, please don't bother. Well, I did. Now you forget the contract, forget the test, because I've got a part for you, all signed and sealed. What? You mean you... You got me a... a real part in a picture? Mm -hmm. In my picture, The Rage of a Woman. Now, it isn't a big part, but it'll give you a hunk of film. You'll be seen. From then on, everything will come easy. A, a real part? What's it like? Well, she's a, she's a jealous wife. Now, it's only one scene, but it's a good scene. It's something you can really get your teeth into. I've never been wrong about picking talent. I'll make a star out of you, Grace. Oh, I'll study that script day and night. The picture was well underway, and rumor on the lot promised a winner. The moment Grace had waited for was here. Rolling. <coughs> Scene 38, take one. Action. Just who do you think you are, walking in here like this? I'm a wife looking for a husband, and I didn't have to look very far. Got it. Okay, folks, once again. Scene 38, take 14. Action. Just who do you think you are, walking in here like this? I'm a wife looking for a husband, and I didn't have to look very far. Cut it. Miss Markham, next time try to get more bite. Yes. All right, roll them. Scene 38, take 15. 
Action. Just who do you think you are walking in here like this? I'm a wife looking for a husband, and I didn't have to look very far. Why must we have a scene? I thought we'd come to an understanding. Will you please get her out of here? I have no intention of leaving. Just what is it you want? I want him. You can't have him. I've got him. He's my husband. And I've got him legally. Cut it. Let's kill the lights and take a rest. Get the producer down here. What kind of a scene would it be, Marion, with this Markham girl reading her lines that way? She just hasn't got it. No fooling, Marion. We got a good picture here. We could jar it into a flop with this scene. Whatever will I say to the poor thing? What did you say to the others? Well, I suppose I can get her a new dress or buy her a nice present or something. Okay, a nice present. Give her some money. Give her some clothes, but don't give her a part. This isn't amateur night. Despite her defeat, Grace remained the stand-in for the star, always clinging to the hope that perhaps someday she would be given another chance. Marion was as dazzling as ever, and still playing the great lady. She had given Grace money, clothes, and a steady income as her paid companion. Grace stayed because she had no place to go. And with Marion, there was security of a kind. But with these gifts, Marion gave something else to Grace. She gave her hate. Hate for every success that Marion achieved. Hate for every kindness. And this was what kept Grace going. Hate. The days turned into years. Years filled with miles and miles of following Marion around. Even when she was away from Marion, Grace was standing in for the star. Another one of her endless chores, signing Marion's name to stacks of pictures for the star's devoted fans. How she hoped that one day they would tire of that plastic smile. And one day they did. The fans stopped writing for the photographs, and Marion was out of a job. When she looked around to see what was left from those fabulous years, there was nothing. Will you look at these bills? Just look at them. I, I practically supported these straws for years, and now they threaten me. Well, try not to think about it right now, Marion. Well, Grace, it mustn't get out that I'm broke. It it'll pull my price down. You know how it is. Where did the money go? I, I, there was so much of it. it. It can't all be gone. What does your business manager say? That I'm $11,000 in debt. Oh, no. Oh, Grace, all I need is one good picture. Just one good picture. Look, dear, why don't I fix you a drink? It'll relax you. Oh, yes. Yes, I'd like that. I'm going to have to economize, that's all. Marry me. Thanks to you, I, I've managed to save a little. You're welcome to any part of it. That's sweet of you, Grace, but no, no, I couldn't. No, I, I'll sell the car and, and the piano and, well, I have some jewelry. Huh? Maybe you're right. Suppose you could put up a front, but what's the use? Now, you can't fool people in this business. Oh, Grace, don't leave me. Don't ever leave me. You're the only friend I have. Don't worry, Marion. I won't. Grace. What's the matter? The lines in my face. What lines? Oh, darling, don't tell me you haven't noticed them. Now, you listen to me. Never seen you look better or younger. Oh, Marion, you've got to snap out of this. This is no good for you. What is good for me? You've got to get out, circulate, 
be seen around. I don't want to see people. If there's one thing people can't stand, it's failure. All right, then why don't you leave town? Nobody ever leaves this town. You want to find the actor who starred in a picture in 1914? You want to find the big director of the 1920s? Well, if they're not dead, they're here somewhere. No, nobody ever leaves. There's an old actress in the city. She has lots of money. You know what she does every night? She sits in the back of her limousine and has a chauffeur driver all over town. But only to the old places. The old studios, the old neighborhoods. And then she comes home around four o'clock in the morning and runs her old pictures. And she has money. I've got an idea, Marion. What? You know what we're going to do tomorrow? We're going to Mike's place for lunch. <laughs> oh, no. Now, you listen to me. We're going to splurge for once. It'll do you good to be seen around. We can't afford to go to Mike's place. You know that. I can. Just this once. All right? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll fix yeah. you a drink. <laughs> there. Feel better? Yeah. Hello, darling. Oh, it, it was a wonderful idea of yours, Grace. It is good to get out and see people. If only someone would drop by and say hello. Oh, well, everybody's so busy. I, I think I'll call my agent. You called him and told him you'd be here. Maybe forgot. Marion! Marion Clayton! How are you, honey? I'm sorry. I, I'm afraid I can't place you out. Sam Rawlings, you remember me. Oh, yes. Well, uh, this is my friend, Grace Markham. Oh, sure. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Rawlings? Hello? Say, why are you been keeping yourself, Marion? Oh, well, uh, Grace and I took a long trip. You see, I've been Say, working Say, how long has it been since you made a picture? Well, let's see. How, how long has it been? Almost a year. Yes. Yeah. Well, you still got a pretty good name, Marion. It's not like it used to be, but there must be a lot of people out there who'd like to see you. Say, um, I'm going to start a picture, a uh, nine-day schedule. You can have the lead in it if we can talk a deal. Of course, I'd have to read the script first, you know. Read the script? Marion, you can read it while you act it. We're going to write it while we shoot it. Can't pay you much money, but uh, we can fix that up with a little percentage. Is it a deal? Yes, it's a deal. Good. Now I'm going to let you in on something. I think we got a real sleeper here. Start shooting on Monday. The picture was shot at an obscure studio on Santa Monica Boulevard. On a quickie, there's no time for a stand-in, so Grace just waited in the background. The producer had called the picture a sleeper, and he was only slightly wrong. It had something to do with sleep, because when it was released, the box office dozed. More years went by, and Marion spent them in hopeless waiting. But Grace had a plan. Marion, I've got a surprise for you. You remember Arthur O'Brien, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, hello, Arthur. I was your dialogue director on a couple of pictures. How are you, Marion? Hi. I'm directing now. That's nice. I have a part for you, Marion. Pretty good one. It was really Grace's idea. She knew about the script and came looking for me. I think it's a great idea that you do it. What kind of a part? It's a good part. An important part. What kind of a part? <laughs> Go on, Arthur. Tell her. Well, uh, it's a story about Hollywood. And the part you'd play, it's a supporting part. But I think it's the best part in the picture. A lot of dimensions to it. You'd portray a woman who's lost everything. Who's down on her luck. What, Trey? Don't have to act it. Just remember it. Of course she'll do it, Arthur. Won't you, Marion? <laughs> well, it's a deal then. I'll send the script over. 
Thank you. Oh, you'll send it over as soon as possible, won't you? Sure. Look at me. I don't wear these glasses against the sun. I wear them against the years. Look at me. I'm getting old and I'm broken, washed up. But I gave the studio some groceries they still brag about. I don't want to act. I don't want a part. I want a job because I want to eat. I have nothing and I'm nobody. Can't you please remember when I was somebody? Grace had designed Marion's final and complete humiliation. A paid-for confession on the wide screen for all to see. I gave this business everything. Now I'm paid to photograph my mistakes. My weaknesses. Well, that part was me, all right. It was everything I did. How could the writers guess such things? They didn't guess, Marion. I helped them. Now, what do you mean you helped them? Well, I wanted to help you. You know, you're very good in the part. But then you've had a lot of practice, haven't you? I think you hate me, don't you? Actually, hate me. I loathe you. Why'd you help me? Why'd you stay with me all these years and, and help me? Because I wanted to stick around until you were a nobody. Oh. You ruined my career a long time ago. I did everything I could to help you. I don't know what you mean. Yes, everything. Sure, you got me tests. Bit parts that didn't amount to anything. You made a fool of me, humiliated me. And then when everything was gone, made me a gift of your condescension. That's how you ruined my career. You never had a career! No. But you did, didn't you? You know, it was a delight to see you fall. That's a little bounce. Can't stay with you. Gotta get away from you. You're evil. <laughs> Why don't you have one more on the road, Marion? Marion disappeared into the night, and somewhere down the stretch of road ran out of life. When her car crashed, she was killed instantly. She left nothing behind her except an Academy Award winning performance for Best Supporting Actress. She was the dearest friend I ever had. And I'm sure her passing is as great a loss to you as it has been to me. She was a magnificent artist and her memory will live with us forever. Marion gone, Grace barely managed to exist by answering fan mail for the studios. Lonely and embittered, Grace Markham's only reminder of the night of the Academy Awards, her one brief moment of glory, was a glossy print of a radiant woman holding a golden statuette awarded to Marion Clayton. Even in death, Marion Clayton was still the star, and Grace Markham to the finish the stand-in.